All right, guys, today we've got something that a lot of people think is just is easy and basic, and they often overlook some of the smaller details that make it a professional job. We're going to show you how to do a professional spark plug replacement today. Let's get into it. Okay, so what we've got is a 2016 Ram 1500 5.7 Hemi engine, uh, two spark plugs per cylinder. We are not going to take you through doing every single spark plug in the car. We're just going to take you through a couple of them on one cylinder and just show you the steps that we use to, or that we go through to replace spark plugs to make sure it's done right, that you're not going to have any issues. So um, one of the things right off the bat that we're going to talk about is the brand of spark plug. Years ago, it didn't really matter that much. You could just put, you know, I mean, Autolite was a big one back in the day. You just put Autolite in everything. Um, that's, that's, those days are gone. You really need to be a little more specific about what you're gonna put in. So in this Chrysler, we're gonna use Champion Spark Plugs. Um, you could use other brands also in this one, but we're gonna put Champions in this one. Um, the Hemi, I believe, Chris, is a very low mileage. Uh, it's like 30,000 miles on these, something like that? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah so, so make sure you're looking up the spec on these things too, because Sometimes you'll feel like, oh, we, we always heard about the 100,000 mile spark plugs or 120,000 miles, but there's a lot of vehicles that are much, much lower than that. So make sure you're looking that up in the maintenance schedule so that you're recommending the spark plug or for the DIYers that, that you're doing the spark plugs at the right time. Um, so the brand is important. If you're going to do it in, a, in a, um, an Asian vehicle, you're going to want to put, you know, um, you know, maybe a, an NGK, um, you know, spark plug in there, a Denso, Bosch, something. Uh, European, we use uh, Bosch and um, NGK, and I think, do we, uh, do we do Denso in some of those every once in a while? Every so often. Sometimes. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you one that is extremely important to remember is certain Mercedes models. You want to get the spark plug. It needs to be a Mercedes spark plug. And you're going to see us torquing these spark plugs in. And I'll tell you right now on those, you need to put a Mercedes spark plug in it and you need to torque that thing down properly because you will mess up an engine if you don't do those, those vehicles properly. So, oh, but this one's a little more basic. So, um, so let's go ahead and let's get the spark plugs out of this cylinder. So we're just going to come in here. We're going to pick an easy side over here. Uh, the other side's a little more difficult to do. So we're just going to um, get a couple of these out. And which is ah, got a couple clips over there still, or no? There we go. Yeah, this one's just there we go. All right, make sure we tighten that one back up again. There. All right, let's get the cover off of it. Easy. There we go. Okay. So on this particular one, um, you see we've got a, one coil here, but there are two spark plugs under this. So we're going to um, just go ahead and get the. I'm probably gonna have to get something to stand on to get this. Our, our handy steps. A tool to take these off? No. No. I mean, you, you could use a um, maybe a small pocket screwdriver, mm -hmm. but I'm not. I'm the clip. I'm really picky about. Of course, this one's gonna want to fight me. You see, we do this live, guys. That's the way it is. We don't just pop it off. We we'll need a light in here. I need to see what I'm doing. Mm 
There we go. All right. It's amazing what happens when you can see. I want to use a ratchet. I don't like using. I don't like using electric for that. Person. I'm just. This is just me. I mean, no, Chris has you. Has the electric out there, and that's fine. Certainly could use that to take it off. I wouldn't put it back on with it 100%, but I'm just a little more, a little more old school. Just because you're in a, you're in a plastic, and that is, actually that's not a plastic. It's a metal valve cover on this one. Yeah. There we go. All right. So is that when you distinguish metal and plastic for electric and stuff? Well, I just don't like using electric when we're dealing with plastic parts because plastic parts are going to have inserts in them. And, you know, if that, that gun's just going, you know, and it's just going to, if it turns the, if it turns the, the uh, insert in there, well, then you're, that's, you're not going to be able to fix that generally. So sometimes trying to be fast, which I'm all about being fast, but sometimes that slows you down. All right, so there's our two. There's our two uh, spark plug, our two boots. So we can see somebody that's got some good dielectric grease already in there, which we're going to show you that in just a minute. Let's go ahead and take that. All right. You gonna go down in there? Oh yeah, nice. All right. And this engine is cold, so I do believe that these are aluminum heads. Um, I would be amazed if they weren't. Yes. So you know you need to be sure that you're you know. Sometimes you need to have these things cold. There are some engines. Um, if you're doing a Ford, what is that? Uh, what is it? The Ford three valve. Uh, the five four. Five four. That's right. My brain. Triton. The Triton motor three valve. There are years of that where the spark plugs get stuck. Um, Maybe we can throw a picture in there of those spark plugs. But those, what we'll do is, because they are notorious, and maybe we can do a video on that someday if we get, get, get lucky and get one in here. Um, the way they're built is different than this. They'll get stuck in the cylinder head. And how we do that is we do a fuel system cleaning on it first, and it will help loosen the carbon up. It's on the tip of that particular model. We have the coils already loose. We have everything ready to go. It, we get the engine nice and hot. We do a fuel system cleaning. We get that carbon loosened up, and then we take the spark plugs out immediately while the engine's hot. That's a that's an exception. Most of the time, you want to do it when they're when they're cold. So, all right. So there's one. It's always a good idea, also when you're when you're pulling these. Um, don't just pull them out and you know throw them on the bench or whatever. Take a look at them because you know it's a good it's a good way to tell how the engine's running that one's pretty clean you know don't see anything really wrong with that one um so if you see a bunch of build up on it white ashy build up on it that could be oil that's you know the engine's using oil if it's got if it's all black and nasty and coated, that could be, you know, running rich, too much fuel. If it's extremely white and really, really clean, that could be that it's running lean. Um, or even possibly some, some coolant leaking into the cylinder if it's extremely clean. But you would hopefully have other issues or hopefully not, you know. So there's the other one. Again, you see the little, don't get over, you know, don't go crazy. That little black area on the porcelain is not a big deal. These don't look bad. One thing that I didn't go over was, you see the, the spark plug socket we're using. There are tons of different spark plug sockets. Here, follow me over. Let me show you just a, a little sampling. Um, these, a lot of these are just to make life easier. So you've got, you know, just all different kinds. I mean, every one of these is something different, right? Different sizes. Uh, some of them you do have to have, um, this is a thin wall, and there are some that, trying to find it here, here we go, 12 point, some of them, if you're, if you're spark plug, that some of them are 12 point, so you have to have that. So all of these just make your life easier. Uh, for those of you that are, you know, do-it-yourselfers, find one that works on your vehicle. Um, these are for getting down into some deep ones and, and get us out of the get us up out of the way 
is find something that's going to work for you. This one will work for some of these spark plugs in this car, and then other ones we're going to be using different spark plug sockets to, to get this job done because this particular one, some of them are easier on this side. The other side is going to be a little tighter. It's going to take some work. So, all right. You got a you got a four cylinder. Assuming that you know if you got a Prius or something where you have to take the cowling and everything off, that's going to be a pain. But once you get to the spark plugs on a four cylinder, straight four, it's pretty much going to be straight down in there, easy. It's the sixes and the eights that are going to be a little more difficult. So, all right. So that's the that's the tooling. Um, we do have a gap. So this is for for checking your spark plug gap. Now I'm going to pull these out. I haven't opened them up yet. Let's just see something here. Most of your spark plugs that you get today, uh, especially if you get like a Denso or an NGK, Bosch, they're going to have a, um, a cardboard tube. See, these don't have them. So what they'll have is a cardboard tube wrapped around the, the um, spark plug threads here, and it'll just sit a little proud of the um, ground electrode. And what that is for is when it's in chipping and these things are getting beat around and knocked around, that you won't close this up. Just because it has that does not mean that that spark plug is gapped correctly. It, it means that it probably still has a gap because sometimes you get these things in and the gap is literally closed because this thing is, like on this particular one, that thing could have hit something and closed the gap up. But even if it's got that cardboard tube, you need to check the gap. So there's several different kinds of these. There's round ones, there's ones with wires on them. The parts store's got go crazy in there. You can go look at them, whatever one works for you. This one works for me. Um, so let's go ahead and get two of them just ready. All right. So, uh, Chris, what's our gap? 35. 35. I know y'all just got a whole bunch of noise. I apologize. Got to get my glasses out. All right, 35. So 35 thousandths, if we look on here, that's going to be right where my thumb is right there. And what we're looking for is, and, and look at that, out of the box. 35 is the gap. Yep. yep. So 35 is the gap, and that thing's sitting at 55. So you're going to have to you have to close that up. Now, this has got a little thing on it here to widen it. Okay, you take that in there and you widen it out. So if I were to lift that up just a little bit, now it's going to be way out there. Okay. So I just usually tap it. I know a lot of guys are like, oh, gosh, you never want to do that. But, you know, it's okay. You can tap it. Don't beat it with a hammer, obviously. But, um, and you just want to get... It down so now we're at 40 about 42 and getting close this is you know that's 35 so there's a bit of a touch to that um, you know I've seen you know you can definitely take it and even tap it maybe on a on a bench or something but um, this is just going to be a little bit a little less and I'm just hitting this ground right here, okay? So, and I don't think this thing, yeah, it won't close it, so. All right, so. So that's, that's a little too, a little too tight, just a touch. So I'm just gonna just, there we go. So maybe a little loose. All right, there we go. So that's good. All right. Now, here's some pieces that often get overlooked. The this has got dielectric grease in it, and um, but we need to replace. We don't need to wash all of this out, but we're going to wipe that off, and we're just going to put some. And it's it's perfectly good. You don't have to get down in there and and dig it all out of there. But we are going to put a little more in there. So this is just. Um, just dielectric grease. You can get this at the parts store. Um, it's got a little handy little lever on it. You can close it up. And so, but they, they come in little tubes also if you're just doing it once. You don't have to kill it. A little bit goes a long way. So, squeeze it just a little bit here. There we go. And then I just kind of stick it down in there to get it kind of moved around in there. What that's going to do is, is just form a little, little seal, little um, seal from the atmosphere to the to the body of the spark plug here and um, 
keep it get a good connection keep the keep the fire from wanting to come out okay the, the spark from wanting to come out so it's just it's just good to have to put that in there here's the other thing that many 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 people don't do you're going to want to use anti-seize okay and you're only going to want to use the copper anti-seize do not use aluminum anti-seize only copper and i say so when i say a little goes a long way a little goes a long way this stuff is a mess by the way don't get this on you so we're just going to take that and we're literally going to put just a tiny little bit on there that's plenty all right i'll even take those and kind of just stick the two together and run them just something i've always done all right, those are ready to go in. Now, now comes the next step. We're gonna put these so I don't mess up the sound. Um, you don't wanna drop these in. You don't wanna put these things and drop them down in there because you just set that gap. So if that thing hits the head, you know, in any way, it's gonna, it's gonna close that up, potentially could close that up. So we wanna make sure that whatever spark plug socket we're using, most of them have got some type of a rubber inside of them to hold the spark plug in. Um, this one's got a magnet inside of it, so it's gonna hold the spark plug in there. So that's not gonna come out, all right? And we're just gonna take that and carefully put it in. And we'll start it by hand. And just run it down until it's seed it all the way or as far as you can get it I mean sometimes these things don't just screw in super easy this one's going in really nice all right that's that's all the way seated I'm gonna go ahead and put the other one in real quick all right and also when you've got the spark plugs out be sure that if you're going to be, you know, I would do one cylinder at a time. If you're doing a four cylinder, you could, you could take all four of them out. Just be 100% sure that you are not letting anything fall down in that cylinder because that is a really, really bad day. Um, all right, let's go ahead and torque it. So we just got a torque wrench it's set to 18 Newton meters, which is the spec for this vehicle. So I'm going to take that. Yeah, I'm sure that the parts stores do. I'm not 100% on that, but I'm, I would be. They rent just about everything else, so. All right, we're just going to take, and just slowly, you know, a torque is a, is a very slow thing. You don't have to, don't yank it. And there we go. Chris. So now we've, we're ready to go in, and, and there's a few different types of spark plugs also. Uh, well, a couple of different types. There's a tapered type, which is not going to have a gasket on it. This has a gasket on it. Let me pull another new one out. Those, the gasket is going to crush. So if you look at that gasket, so you can see how this one is flat and that one's sitting, it kind of got a cone shape to it. Once you install it, this is gonna crush, okay? And that does create a, I mean, that's basically a ceiling washer so that no exhaust gases can come out of it. Sometimes you'll pull a spark plug out and you'll see, now, if you see just a black, these are in really good shape, these spark plugs. Um, this client takes care of his vehicle. Um, sometimes you'll pull these out and you'll see a whole bunch of, if you see just a bunch of, you know, just black, brown, ring around this that's generally okay but that is exhaust gas that's come out of it if you see a lot of that and it's come up that's exhaust gas that's actually getting past the spark plug itself and coming out past the porcelain if you see and it's very difficult to explain this but if you see a black trace 
So let's say you've got a car. Let's, let's, let's do a scenario here. You've got your vehicle, it's, it's skipping, it's misfiring, right? And you think it's ignition. And so you pull the spark plugs out to inspect it. Um, and you see a black line, a trace on this thing. Just a, It'll be a thin black line. That is spark coming out of that boot. That spark coming down. And it's, it's, a, it's basically a carbon trail for the spark. And it's, that spark plug is no good at that point. And so at that point, I'd put a spark plug in it and possibly a coil or at least a boot kit on the, on the coil. So just something to think about. Usually you'll just get one. If you've got multiples, then you got issues. Probably, probably misfiring pretty bad. Okay, so we've got our dielectric in there. Um, this is ready to go back in. Now, I will tell you that um, we're not going to... We're not going to torque this, okay? Am I going to tell you not to torque it? No, 100% not. You want to torque it? Torque it. I would, I would highly recommend um, for those that are either new to the business or maybe, you know, you um, are haven't torqued things in a while. I mean, I, I go through stages in my career where I'll just torque literally everything for a little while because I want to recalibrate my my elbows and my hands and stuff to stuff like this. Um, but I just feel like this one, could we torque it a hundred percent? I'm not, you know, but listen, this is a real video. We really do it like this. If I sit there and torque every one of these coils, that's not, that's not what we do. So I'm not going to lie to y'all and say, oh, we torque every single coil. We do torque every single spark plug, but we're not going to, not going to sit there and, and, you know, tell you that we do something we don't. So we're just going to take the coil. I started them by hand 100%. I would definitely not put these in with anything electric or anything uh, air. So again, we are, we are um, we, yeah, we want to do it fast, but we want to do it where we don't have to fix something that we broke later. All right. All right, that's in. Then we're going to take the, the plug. I'll we'll put it back on and make sure that we put the lock clip back in there. And there's two spark plugs on this vehicle. So... That's the right way to do it. Um, you know, you, that's, the, that's the best way to do it. You're not gonna have problems. If you do have a problem, you know it's not gonna come from the installation. Uh, you know, a couple of things that I see guys do is they'll take these boxes and they, you know, they'll throw these things around. Like, I mean, just throw them all over the place. And, you know, um, like I say, we're gonna show you a picture of, of one that has got the tube on it. But even then, you don't wanna you know, these things are porcelain, you know, these things are, these can break very easily. Be gentle with these things. Um, I see guys throw them around. It's just crazy. The other thing is don't, a little goes a long way. Okay. So, uh, this is good. It helps to one, it's going to help for the spark plug to come out later, but it also helps the ground path. The, the threads of this spark plug is actually the ground path for the, um, electron. So it helps to, to, to keep that ground path good, um, it enhances it a little bit. But don't use aluminum, remember, only copper. And I, I've seen guys take this stuff, and man, I don't know, maybe they got stock in CRC and they just, I mean, they just, you know, a little goes a long way. You're just putting a little coating in there. So just remember that. These are all small things. These don't, these aren't, you know, revolutionary. Uh, most shops do this, but a lot, you know, if you have, if you don't do it, go ahead and get the get the products. They're inexpensive, and it's going to make sure that when you're done with this job, you know it's done right. It's professionally done, and you can be proud of the craftsmanship that you did. You know, even though it's just spark plugs. So, uh, any questions? You know, comments. How do you do it? What do you do different? You know, I love hearing the comments. I love hearing the comments from around the country and even around the world where you know you guys do something a little bit different boy our break video we got a lot of good comments in there on on putting some anti some uh nic's and stuff on the backing plate i love to hear that stuff how do you guys do different to deal with your your environmental conditions so leave those comments down below hit that hit that subscribe button uh we're really you know getting up there we really appreciate that and uh give us a thumbs up on this video and uh we'll see you in the next one